fellow human friend. Uh, haven't How talked you in a while. No, I'm doing well, my friend. I hope you're doing well up uh, in Olympia over there. I um, want to ask a couple of questions, Cliff. Um, first of all, ill winds. Japan, the reactor's going down. Do you think this is the ill winds that uh, is finally coming up in the linguistics? Yes, I do. It's got me really uh, quite a bit um, energized here because, indeed, I think that is the case. We've already seen some fulfillment on it, and then we've had some really spooky linguistics show up where, I, I mean, I, I kind of wondered what was going to happen because the Israeli mistake went away, and that was a temporal marker. But at the same time, today we've got linguistics on Israel as a pariah state showing up all over the net, and that's at about 19%. And then we've got um, Israel maybe going to attack the Palestinians. And that was at about 9 or 10%. So those languages are rising just as we get our nuclear volcanoes. I kind of figured that, and I've been following you very, very closely, my friend. And I say you're three times or four times better than chance when it comes to the linguistics analysis here. Um, second question, okay. Ring of fire, five volcanoes went off today. Do Are we looking at something in California taking place within the next, five to ten days. What, what's your take on that? That's really a, uh, uh, yes, we're looking at something on the West Coast. Yes, I think the West Coast will be the site of the earthquake that I wrote about in the Shape 9 that uh, causes a huge economic disruption here. No, I'm not so sure about the timing, but it's curious that on the March 25th is when we should go into release language, but I could make a case that a, an earthquake here uh, would cause release language, but so would fallout. So it could be either of those. Make sense? But the release yeah, language is going, going for seven months, so whatever's going to happen is going to cause a big impact. Robert in Las Vegas, you're on the air with Cliff High. Yeah, uh, a question, uh, Cliff, uh, about the whole Japanese nuclear reactor meltdown thing going on. Uh, what do you see from that as it's happening in real time? Uh, my kind of concern and well my concerns are are practical and immediate so it made me get my Geiger counter out and locate my dosimeters and my uh, potassium iodide even though that you don't take that stuff if you're over 40 everybody before even thinking about taking that stuff should go read all the cautions if you're taking other medications you know it can send your blood pressure through the roof all this different kind of stuff and you only want to take it when you know you're going to be exposed to fallout so you don't want to do it until you actually know the fallouts on the ground thus the need for a Geiger counter uh, but yes at the the Japanese are really good, though. I mean, you've got to give them credit, because when they built these things, they were not driven by dollars. They were not driven by, oh, let's save a buck, it'll never happen mentality. They had an idea of, we've been living with this stuff for years, it will happen. Therefore, let's build a huge, giant concrete bowl under these things, just in case this stuff ever liquefies. And so far, those big bowls are holding. If they don't, then everybody's got serious trouble. But we have to acknowledge some things right off the bat. The rolling blackouts they've got are going to affect the global economy. Uh, the loss of all these uh, nuclear generating plants are going to affect the global economy. The impact on this on a global level is going to be huge. It's going to be um, uh, as big a drain on the global uh, economic uh, system as was the building of the Three Gorges Dam, um, which caused considerable ripples in the production of cement and precious metals and all kinds of resources were affected. So we've got to look at that. And then another thing, too, is that these plants going may get to the point where vast areas of Japan are no longer habitable. This is an unfortunate thing for us because we kept seeing in our data uh, projections showing that vast areas of uh, Australia would be colonized in an emergency way by sudden shiftings, diaspora, we call it, the shifting of the peoples from north and to the east. So we kind of thought it would be Indonesia, but it might be Japan and the Philippines. So Cliff, do you think we need to be monitoring the jet stream at this moment to pay attention to these reactors? I've got it on real time on my machine, yeah. It's okay, gonna, if, so it's if, serious if they go, it, yeah, the issue for us is if the plumes reach 5,000 feet in height, then you can be sure that you need to track what's known as the 300 millibar uh, jet stream um, uh, uh, real-time data. The best place to get